The concept of enclosing tastiness in dough is very popular worldwide. You might be familiar with empanadas, ravioli or gyoza, but what makes pierogi stand out in this common concept? Why are Russian pierogi so popular and why they are actually not Russian? Are the pierogi you find in restaurants the same as the ones we Poles eat at home? And do we even eat pierogi? Cześć, cześć, I'm Marcin. Let's talk about these doughy pockets of delight in the Polish way. Most likely the dish migrated from China and pierogi appeared in Polish lands around the 13th century. Legend has it that they reached us thanks to bishop Jacek Odrowąż, who was so amazed by them in Kyiv that he decided to bring the dish to Poland. But I won't bore you any longer with history. Every Pole knows that pierogi actually appeared on tables thanks to our babchas. So let's move on to more tasty topics. Types of pierogi. So if you tell a Polish babcia that you want pierogi, she will probably ask. So I believe we can divide pierogi into two categories, savory and sweet. Both are equally popular. The same dough is used for both types and we call both types pierogi. After shaping, each type is boiled and can be eaten immediately after cooking, but they can also be fried or baked, which adds even more flavor. However, I think that eating them directly after boiling is popular at home, and we tend to fry them if we want to reheat pierogi made earlier or day before. By the way, pierogi is the plural form of the word pieru, so saying pierogies might sound a bit funny to Poles, but Barcia probably will be super happy that you want even more than just only pierogi. Sweet pierogi. Okay, let's start with the sweet type. You won't find anything complicated here. Take fruit, place in dough, maybe add a bit of sugar and probably some kind of babcia's magic. Seal the dough and cook it in the boiling water. After that, you might add some sugar or cream as a topping. Here, the most common fruits to use as a filling are strawberries, blueberries, apples or plums. The sweet pierogi category also includes pierogi with twaru. Usually, we eat sweet pierogi in summer, when you can buy cheap, good and fresh fruits. Or you live in the countryside and you have a large garden and during harvest season you make everything you can with them. And by the way, we use fruits for homemade preserves and liquors, but that's a topic for another episode. Let's move back to pierogi. Sweet pierogi are so simple yet so tasty. The key is not in the complexity, but rather in excellent, delicious, fresh ingredients and their proportions, just like in margarita or capricciosa. The fruits we use are usually those that naturally occur in Poland and popular here. So it might be hard to find pierogi with mango, pineapple or peach, since these fruits don't grow in Poland and the important ones don't taste as good as in the countries where they grow naturally. But hey, maybe it's not a stupid idea to try making pierogi with different fruits than usual. And wait a second, there is actually one more. Pierogi leniwe are made from the same ingredients as the traditional pierogi with twaruk. Flour, water, eggs and twaruk. They were named lazy because when babcia feels lazy that day and didn't want to go through the separate process of making dough for pierogi, rolling it, cutting, stuffing it with twaruk and carefully sealing the edges of each pierogi, but instead she mixed everything together in a bowl and cut it into the pieces with a knife and straight into the pot. Instead of five steps, we have just two. Savory pierogi. We don't have pierogi institute or at least one that is popular and generally respected by Poles. So I almost certain that the dough thickness, ingredients proportion and taste will differ wherever you try them. And for the most people, the only correct recipe and proportions are those according to which their babcia prepared pierogi. So if you ask which place has the best pierogi, zdania ekspertów są podzielone. Ah, here, onions and bacon fried in butter are used as a topping to enhance the delicious flavor of the pierogi. This combination adds a delicious and pleasant touch to the dish. First type of filling, pierogi ruskie. They are probably the most popular. And let's pause here for a moment. Pierogi ruskie is often mistaken translated and understand as a Russian pierogi. Probably this comes from the fact that Russian in Polish is commonly used as rosyjski or ruski. But in fact, ruskie should be translated as rufinian and rufinia is located somewhere here. But what do you find in pierogi ruski? The filling is a mix of twaruk, potatoes and most probably onions. Personally my favorite pierogi. However, they also spark the most heated discussion. Some believe that the onions shouldn't be added to the filling. The proportions of twaruk to potatoes are not obvious. For some, a predominant twaruk flavor is not tasty. Others think that too many potatoes suggest the cook is trying to save money by using more of the cheaper ingredient. Potatoes. For some, the filling should be completely smooth, while others prefer the ingredients to be combined but still retain their texture. Nie urodził się jeszcze taki, co by wszystkim dogodził. But you definitely should try pierogi ruskie. Next type of filling. Pierogi z mięsem. In my home, the meat used for cooking rosu was later used by babcia as a filling for pierogi. Then she adds other ingredients like fried onions, seasoning, etc. and packs them into the dough. Pierogi z mięsem you get in restaurants might be made in a slightly different way, but it will always be ground meat with other ingredients. If done properly, I highly recommend it. Definitely worth trying, but quite easy to ruin with poor quality meat and lack of proper seasoning. And this often happens with uh, this kind of pierogi pulled by weight or frozen. Another 
other filling. Pierogi z kapustą i grzybami are definitely traditional pierogi. Although I know that Paul's opinions are divided. Some only eat them on Christmas. Like me. For others, it's one of more frequently chosen types of pierogi. Regardless of preferences, if you are in Poland, I highly recommend trying this type of pierogi. As any other can be easily recreated in any country, but for this filling, access to the right ingredients might be difficult. For the filling, we use sauerkraut, which made in a Polish way, I would say is not popular outside Poland, or at least outside Central or Eastern Europe. And by the way, we use sauerkraut kraut not only for pierogi, but also as a side dish or for making bigos, kwaśnica or wazanki. Returning back to pierogi z kapustą i grzybami. We add the right mushrooms. And Poland has quite a lot of good mushrooms. To kapusta. And then spices and onion to taste. I must also mention uszka. They are made using the same dough as pierogi. Shaped this way and usually filled with meat or sauerkraut and mushrooms. However, what makes them special is that they are typically eaten with barszcz. And I think that Russian or Ukrainian borscht is more popular worldwide. Polish barszcz differ from the Ukrainian or Russian versions in its clarity and simplicity of ingredients, focusing on taste of beets, while the Ukrainian and Russian versions are richer in ingredients, like vegetables and meat. And among other things, we eat Polish barszcz with uszka, which as you might guess, I mentioned because it's super delicious dish. I've talked about the more traditional and popular types of pierogi. There are also many local fillings, but I will leave that for episodes dedicated to regional dishes, so subscribe now to be sure you don't miss anything. And of course, as in any cuisine, people like to experiment and create new variations. The dough and shape remain relatively unchanged. Most experiments are with the filling. If you are in Poland, I recommend trying traditional flavors first, but I think you shouldn't be afraid to experience something different. Do Poles eat pierogi? The worst thing I hate about pierogi is the fact that you need to spend a lot of time and you need a lot of space in the kitchen to make them. Therefore, if you don't have a babcia who has some free time and is willing to devote it to prepare something delicious for her grandchild, making pierogi at home is not not as popular anymore. However, considering that in Poland you can buy frozen pierogi packages in almost every store and there are many places where you can buy them by weight, ready to reheat, and just like pizza can be bought in Ceria, pierogi can be bought in pierogarnia or in restaurants with Polish cuisine or in milk bars. So I would say it's still a pretty popular dish here. Poles typically eat pierogi for dinner without any side dish or specific beverage. Where to find the best pierogi? Babcia always makes the best pierogi. But let's say you don't have any Polish babcia handy. I generally advise against buying frozen or weight salt pierogi because it's not easy to find good ones. And oh my god, don't buy this crap labeled as pierogi on Christmas markets Nie wiem, czy or on pierogi festivals. No, no to były najgorsze pierogi, jakie jadłem chyba w Polsce. Tak szczerze, naprawdę. Don't ask me why, but always on such events food won't be top class. Often it shouldn't even be considered as food. If a place is called Pierogarnia, it's a sign that they specialize in making pierogi. So head in that direction. Not hesitate to go to a milk bar, where you will find good and inexpensive Polish dishes, including pierogi. There are also restaurants specializing in Polish cuisine, and probably every such restaurant will have pierogi. However, sometimes they are there just because a Polish restaurant without pierogi. To niemożliwe. Nie ma takich rzeczy. Panie, daj pan spokój. So it's worth asking the waiter if they recommend pierogi or maybe some other dish. And you have many other great dishes. Want to learn more about them? Subscribe for more.